Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to a church. Um, well, we thank you for tuning in and watching and just being a part of what God is doing. Um, to be honest, I have a lot of ideas of what God wants me to talk about. But one of the things that I like to do, because I, I want it to sh come straight from heaven, straight through me, straight to you. And um, that you may be fed directly from the king. Um, I'm just a vessel. And that's all I try to be. So I don't really, I do write stuff down as he tells me, but I don't really try to rehearse anything. I just like try to let it flow through. So I hope you hear something that you need to hear. Um, so, well, one of the things that just came to me as I, before I started recording was God wanted me to tell his people that the reason why you're not experiencing a new life is because you have not let go of your old life. And that could come with constantly talking about your old life, um, come with being a victim of the past. That can also come with trying to make plans for the future. Basically, the title of the sermon is God's will is not your will. His ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. I believe this is in Psalms. Just as high as the heavens are. I don't know if you've ever seen the universe. It's like the earth is like this in comparison to the planet that's bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like it's infinite. It's huge. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth. When I think of that, I think of like dirt. So is the Lord's ways and his thoughts higher than ours and yours. So if you want to live a transformed new life, one of the biggest things I wanted to emphasize on is the hardest thing for people to be, why people don't want to become Christians is because it's a calling to die to yourself. When you're baptized, you're baptized with Jesus' death. And when you're raised, you're raised with a new life. And you're not living and experiencing a new life because you're still living in your old ways. You're still planning for the future. You're still taking up your own life instead of laying it down. You're not experiencing God or this world or life in a new way because you have your old ways still. When you were baptized, you said, I'm going to die to myself every day for the rest of my life. I'm going to offer myself up as a drink offering for people to feast on me as we feast on the word of God, whom is Jesus, that is the bread of life. So we may have life. So it's all about surrendering every day, all the time, more and more until we're in complete submission like Jesus was when he lived here on this earth as a human. And a lot of people don't like that. They don't want to lay down their sin or their old ways and habits. They like the past or they constantly talk about it. They like their sin. But if you want to live a new life, you have to lay it down. You have to lay it down. You have to die. You have to follow the Holy Spirit and read God's word. You have to pray for your enemies. I know it's hard. There has to be a change in your heart and in your life. You have to trust unconditionally. What Jesus did for you on the cross is done. Build that relationship every day. Lord, not my will, your will. Lord, what do you want today? What do you want this hour, this minute? What do you want for the rest of my life? It's not my life no more. It's yours. You've been bought with a price. And the price of forgiveness is to surrender. Now, I know it's hard at times to let go of certain things. But there has to be and there will be a point where you will have to choose Jesus 
or choose your your worldly passions or desires. I like making music. <laughs> what God was, he asked me, he said, I know you like this in its art form, but if I asked you to lay it down, would you? Would you lay it down for me? Because I asked you to. And trust me that I will provide something greater or better for, for you in that area of your life. So this new hope, this new life that we talk about in church, it's not just a routine. It's not just you just show up and you go back into the world and you just you live the same life over and over again. The, things, the thing about us humans is we want to experience something new. That's why we're here. We want to see something new, hear something new and not bad stuff. We want new hope. But we don't get new hope because we have our own um, values of what we believe will bring us hope. Which the world tells us, if you do this, you'll be happy. If you do that, you'll be happy. But Jesus says, if you gain the whole world, you'll never be happy. One of the things I learned that became real to me was, for instance, my daughter. It was yesterday. And she, she was crying or whining about her bottle. There was no tears. And she was just like, I want it, I want it, I want it, you know. Gave her a bottle. She picked it up and then threw it. Or like literally get, got rid of it really quickly. And then she was like climbing over here to get something else. And then I gave it to her. And then she was over here trying to get something else. And I gave it to her. And, and it just made it worse. Like giving her all these things just made her more angry and more loud and um, whining more. And I was like, what the heck? I gave you everything you wanted and you still aren't happy. Because happiness doesn't come from this world. Happiness doesn't come from the things that you think that you want. Happiness actually comes. Eternal happiness, maybe for the moment you might get what you want and be happy. But eternal happiness comes from worshiping and surrendering and getting to know your Father in heaven. That's where he talks about the narrow gate. He says, I am the only one who can satisfy your heart's desires. You don't even know what you want. You just see it and think that's what you want because everyone else has it, or you see everyone else smiling because they have it. Unfortunately, people with the most money in this world are usually the most miserable. You already know one of the people that I'm gonna be speaking about is Donald Trump. I shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> I mean, he's yelling at everybody. Let's just say that much. That's the fruit of his tree. If he's a tree, that's who he is. That's the fruit that he bears that comes out of his mouth, that comes out of his lifestyle. But you have a choice to, to glorify and to choose what you want to choose. Is that to be honored? Or is being a humble, loving person to be honored? Being loud and obnoxious, is that to be honored? or being meek and quiet, is that to be honored? Or you can redefine those things for yourself. But if you wanna be a Christian, God says you have to lay down all of your understanding, all of your theology, all of your, um, your philosophy. You have to lay down the, every way that you think, every way that you are, and I will replace those things with new things. And that's the painful process, the letting go, the becoming new. I even struggle with it. Let go, let go of this, let go of that, let go of your way. I struggle with it. It's a challenge and it's a battle. And it seems like it's never over or ending. Forgive this person, oh, snap. Pray for this person, do this. It's literally coming into 
full submission with every thought held captive to God and saying, God, what do you want with this thought? God, what do you want at this moment? God, what do you want? I want you to take three breaths. I want you to stop breathing. I want you to do this. It's not going to be that intense, but he's not going to bear something on you that you can't handle. But he's going to ask you to do some things that are going to cause you to step outside of your comfort zone. If you're a Christian, you should only find comfort in Jesus who gives you peace wherever you're at in whatever you're going through. But if you have fallen away, it's because you found peace in this world. And I've said it once and I'll say it again. You can't have both. You can't have the peace and love and patience and kindness of God and have the world's peace, love and patience and kindness. They are not the same thing. They do not mean the same thing, even if they are clothed with the same words. God wants to put on a new garment in your life. He wants to give you true happiness and true joy. But the problem is, do you want to surrender? Do you want to lay it down? My life is yours. My thoughts are yours. What do you want from me, Lord? I can't explain how good life has been to me since I've been doing that. I can't even tell you or begin to imagine to tell you how amazing and how filling it is to do God's will. It's just, it's heaven here. I'm in hell out here, but I'm in heaven right here. Not because of myself, it's because he gives me rest. Even when I'm at war out here, or even in here with myself, he gives me rest. And that's the wrath of God, is you have no rest. You never have enough out here. Though I am poor, I am rich. Not by my own understanding, not by my own ways. I am rich because I know my Savior. And he wants to enrich you greatly. He wants to pour out a blessing on your life. He wants to nourish you in ways that you've never could imagine how you could be nourished and filled. Not of food, not of the passions and the pleasures of this world, but of something that is beyond your comprehension. And it is good. It is amazing. And he's the only one that's good. One of my favorite verses that's a new one that I've learned or God exposed to me was it was David in the Psalms. He was saying, who could satisfy my soul but you, O Lord? For my soul thirsts for your love and your fast, steadfast faithfulness. It's good. He's always there, always willing. But we aren't. So that pretty much concludes the message that I have for you. Um, I want to add on a little more, maybe something to close on. I think it would just be surrender. Surrender. The same message I can, I, I can preach a thousand different messages, but the same message is every day is surrender. Surrender and trust. That's what, it, that's what it's faith is. Surrender and trust. Surrender and trust. You will never find happiness in this world unless you surrender and trust in Jesus who died for your sins. You can have all the things that you want in this world, but you will never find true peace or happiness or joy or contentment or love unless you surrender to Jesus, God's son. God loves you so much. I can't begin to even tell you. I can try as I'm trying. He loves you so much. 
He cares for you dearly. But he hates sin because sin hurts you. And it destroys everything. It destroys families. It destroys friendships. It destroys trust. It destroys even our bodies. It destroys the world. This world, we were never meant to live in it with the way it is, with all the bad, with any bad. We were never meant to live and experience bad. That's what sin does. We were never meant to die. We were just meant to love and keep loving and keep spreading the love as the clouds water the, the earth and the earth give it back. We were meant to share. That's what love is, sharing. But Satan is greedy. He don't want to share anything. So I empower you. I, I have nothing to gain from this. But I have Christ to gain. I lose everything. Because I realize, yes, I got this and I got that. And I even wanted it. And I thought it would fill me, but it didn't. And now I'm just realizing this life is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. Nothing means anything. The only thing that it could mean if God puts value on it. But without God's hand over our life, that's probably how you're feeling. Useless. But if you want hope and you want a new life and you don't want to feel useless and you want to matter, give up your life to Jesus. I can't say it enough. Give up your life to Jesus every day. I thank you for watching. God bless.